Welcome to our podcast, Das Seriensprechzimmer, which translates into the TV talking room. My colleague Ricarda was lucky enough to attend a roundtable with actor Jeffrey Pierce, who not only voiced Tommy in The Last of Us video games, but also plays Perry on the HBO series adaptation. To keep the privacy of the other journalists in the room, I will record their questions with my voice. Please enjoy our talk with The Last of Us actor. How did you want to portray your new character Perry in the series, but keeping in mind that the fans of the game know you as Tommy? Hmm, interesting. I, I think that one of the, certainly my intention was, I wanted an audience that knew Tommy to accept this new character uh, as someone different. Um, and I, you know, I, I think that that, uh, that there's been people are excited. The, you know, like the sort of behind the scenes idea of like, yeah, that's Tommy, um, has been great. But I also feel like I, I was able to craft a character out of the the sort of bones of what Craig and Neil wanted that would be different from Tommy. Um, one of the things that Gabriel absolutely nailed was the there's a kindness, there is a softness. A layer of Tommy that has that, uh, uh, that was key to the games. Uh, and I think that that's what uh, uh, Gabriel really, he, he absolutely nailed that aspect of him. Um, whereas Perry is someone who, he wasn't just in the military, he was of the military his entire life experience until the outbreak. And so, and the reason why he survived is not by luck and not by being ruthless, but by being a professional up until the end of episode five, um, when his sort of heart uh, uh, guides him more than his uh, professional experience. Um, so that, I mean, the, you know, and, and it just sort of like, Tommy's not a professional. He was in the military, so he has some skills, but he is just a, a man trying to live his life. Uh, uh, Perry had a vocation and he has tried to apply that over the 20 years in between and uh, found his niche in helping the revolution in Kansas City. I don't know if that answers the question. <laughs> Thanks so much. Um, we'll come to Ricarda in Germany for our next question, please. Yeah. Hi. I was wondering, um, how did it feel to... Um, suddenly be in this post-apocalyptic world that you've only known from the game and voicing the game uh, and now you are actually in the set and I know that a lot of physical and actual effects um, as uh, tools were used for the set uh, how did it feel to be in that set now? Uh, Neil called me when he was directing uh, his episode and said you're not going to believe what they've done they took everything that we imagined and everything that we created digitally in the game and they made it real um <laughs> i was in calgary and i wasn't shooting I, and i went out and got lunch and i walked by a gas station and there were there was a line of about 75 cars in this alley that they were gassing up on a weekend and i was like there's moss all over these cars what the hell is that about and i realized that these were all of the cars from The game that they had taken literally 50 or 60 cars uh, from 2003 and earlier and put moss on them and grass and and pollen and made all of these cars and then i walked onto the set and in episode five where the sort of climax the climactic battle takes place they built 15 to 20 houses on a, a parking lot and they had done every detail i've done like work on my house and I have like laid patios and I build motorcycles sometimes. So I know how much sweat and blood and effort it takes to do the little things well. And the crew poured their cell, themselves into making these things all come to life in every way you can imagine. So it blew my mind and just, you know, you're just humbled by the artistry that is taking place uh, uh, when there's not, not a camera anywhere in sight. Thank you. If you could do something in the video game that you've taken from the series, what would that be? I would want to play Perry and Kathleen's story. 
I think mm -hmm. there's, t you know, I would want to know what happened uh, in Kansas City that led to the overthrow of the FEDRA uh, government. Uh, that would be an amazing story. It's 12 yeah. or 15 hours of gameplay right there that I would really enjoy playing. And part of think when I thought about Perry, I thought about him from a practical level. And I thought about, about him from a character level. But I also wanted to honor what he would be in a game. Um, so when we talked about his wardrobe, when we talked about his weaponry, when we talked about what he would carry with him. Uh, I wanted it to be a character that would be, you know, a playable character within the game. So that's why he's outfitted the way that he is. Having given life to Tommy in the game, how is it to watch Gabriel Luna have his take on Joel's brother? And what were new things you learned about the character after so many years? First, he absolutely nailed the performance of Tommy. Um, one of the things that I've talked about a little bit before is that, you know, before I came in and read for Tommy, I came in, before I came in and played Tommy, I auditioned for Joel for the game. Um, and, and I was great, but Troy Baker came in and he was Joel. And so he got the job and deserved it. Uh, and so when they called me in to play Tommy, that was something completely different. And I loved every moment of, of crafting that character. Uh, sort of almost in response to what Troy was doing. Um, but, you know, 20, 30 people gave feedback on Tommy before I saw any of his lines. And after I got off the stage, two or 300 people at Naughty Dog took my performance and digitized it and repainted it and recreated it. So Tommy belongs to a lot of people before he belongs to me. Uh, and Gabriel took all of those different facets and brought them to the, the show. Uh, and then he brought all of himself. And I don't think you're going to find a handsomer, more charismatic Tommy going. <laughs> so I'm honored by his performance and, 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 and just sort of like I get to sit back and say, well, yeah, that, that is a, yeah, that, that I was a part of his creating of that character but in the same way that so many people were part of the original creation. You have been on the other side of the Joel and Ellie story. Has it been more difficult or even easier to act because The Last of Us is so good in showing the motivation of both sides? Uh, it, it, it Certainly, uh, I think that, that in terms of like the, the being outside of the story of Joel and Ellie made it less of a pressure cooker for Melanie and I, that we were creating something new. Um, I can only imagine uh, uh, the sort of underlying strain of expectation that Pedro and Bella had to have uh, uh, in terms of approaching two characters that are that iconic. And I am so happy for them that they absolutely killed it. <laughs> and, I'm, and, and in many ways, I would, you know, that's not pressure that I don't think I would have wanted that pressure to play Tommy. That would have been a lot of pressure for me to come in and try to realize that role. Um, so yeah, I'm, you know, I, I'm, I prefer low pressure situations. <laughs> Does that answer the question? No, I want to know if it's more difficult to go against Joel and Ellie to be, I mean, not the bad guy, but you know, their antagonist. I think that, that uh, for the most part, uh, Kathleen and Perry feel like they're acting righteously. Um, and so, uh, and I like to think that, that if, I got to Joel, Joel would have some problems. Um, and <laughs> yeah, so that's, a, that's how, you know, that was my attack on, on Perry for sure. <laughs> Working with the video game, did you ever expect to visualize it, to turn it into something bigger, something like a series? Yes, absolutely. Um, <laughs> I, it, it, look, it is a stunning success. It's ridiculous. I mean, it, it is a, uh, the kind of thing that you, uh, uh, in some sense, it's it's almost impossible to imagine something being so well received. But my experience on the video game was such a, I don't know, look, you, you do the best you can in every circumstance that you go into as an actor. Uh, you attack it the same uh, every day, uh, but sometimes the material is not going to support what you do. But from the first table read of the video game. I knew that we were 
onto something incredibly special because you just feel like the hum in the room and you feel the, the, the work that is on the page coming to life in ways that uh, uh, happens once every thousand hours of television. And so the idea, if you would ask me then like, well, you know, 13 years from now, this is gonna be a massive hit on HBO. I would say, yeah, I can, I can see that. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, you think about the amount of effort between here and there, that's climbing Mount Everest to build it. Uh, uh, but the kernel was there. And I think that I, I hope that what this reminds people who make the shows is that it starts there. That if it's not on the page, it doesn't matter how much money or effort you throw at it, it's not going to be good. Uh, but if it is on the page, if it's in the story, if it's in the heart of what the storytellers are trying to do, you can make something special out of it if you build it brick by brick. But if it's not there in the writing, it's not there in the story, who gives a fuck? How do you want this story to inspire a world? Do you see it as some kind of prophecy of some sort? Uh, I hope that like all great art that it holds a mirror up, that uh, it moves people, that it, it upsets people, because I think that art has to do that uh, in order for us to sort of wrestle with uh, uh, our human demons. Um, we have a lot of things that we need to solve as a species in order to get to a place where we're actually going to survive. And so the metaphor of an apocalypse is, is an apt metaphor because we're looking down the barrel of it. If we can't get past racism and misogyny and our cultural you know, uh, desire to destroy each other and the, the clash of religions and mythology, if we can't get past those things, we don't deserve to keep going. And I think that stories like this give us an opportunity to look in the mirror and change. Uh, and then it's up to us, once we sort of wrestle with these things, to decide what we're going to do as a species. Are we going to go forward or are we going to end it? And that's, I think, the most important um, story we can tell in 2023. We need to ask these questions because we're, we're on the brink. I don't know. I hope that... I hope that Kids who were 12 years old when The Last of Us came out are in their mid-20s now. And so they have gotten uh, uh, that story as part of their the way they look at the world. And when I meet fans of the game who have had their lives impacted by it, it's impacted the way that they think and the way they look at the world. And I think that the idea that 20 million people a week are going to have that same opportunity to be affected Uh, is is really, really important. Considering how wildly popular the game was, were there any kind of nerves or hesitations from you about being in the show? <laughs> None. Uh, maybe naivete. Uh, I, but no, I, I, when I, when I, they had, they had, had an offer out, I think uh, they were looking at uh, uh, Mahershala uh, Ali to play uh, Joel at one point. I was like, well, then there's no way I'm playing Tommy. And when they cast Pedro, I was like, yeah, there's definitely no way I'm playing Tommy. And I think that that's, I think that's great. I think that's really, really good, especially in sort of like, you know, our storytelling, we have to expand beyond the idea of like a white dude as the lead, you know, hero or anti-hero. And I think it's amazing that Pedro and Gabriel are sort of in many ways the, the, the forces of nature behind this thing, these two Latino men. Um, and then, yeah, uh, yeah, and then game two, yeah, there, there is, it is really important that that be part of the way that we tell stories. But as soon as, like, it was greenlit, I, I told me, I was like, anything, I'll stand in the background with a spear. Uh, I would be my absolute joy to help this thing come to life in any way. And that it got to be this character who, to me, is uh, every iconic uh, 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 Thing that I would ever want to do in a role uh, and then gets his great ending uh, is just sort of perfect. Even though your new character wasn't in the original game, did you play the game again in preparation for your new role? I, I have played all three versions of the game. 
<laughs> of both games. Um, uh, so it's, yeah, I mean, just they're so good. Uh, I can't imagine not having had the chance to 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 experience them. Um, there had never been a game at the point the first one came out where the emotional uh, uh, experience was as important as anything else. And so uh, for me as an artist, I mean, that's what you want. You want to you want to experience those feelings. And so, yeah, I mean, the second game is just heartbreaking in so many layers and so many levels that you just have to stop, not because you're tired or bored, but because it is a little bit overwhelming. And what more can you ask for from, from art? And the idea that that's happening in, you know, gaming, which I think is diminished, uh, I think that that's going to change for a lot of people in terms of the way they look at how they, you know, where do you get your art from? Yeah, you can get it from TV and movies, but you can also find it in the, you know, in the apex of, of what's being done in, in the game. Thank you. Um, back to Ricarda in Germany. Yeah. I was wondering if we ever had an actual zombie apocalypse on us, what would be your weapon of choice and your strategy to survive? Oh, man. I think that the greatest, uh, you know, I don't think about zombie apocalypse, but I think about the things that could happen. And you imagine the sort of practical breakdowns that could occur. And the greatest, there would be no overcoming trying to protect my family. Uh, I, I think that, I think that that immediately the 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 it would be unsurvivable because you, you just couldn't stand by and let something happen to the people that you love. Um, so I don't think any weapon is getting in the way of 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 that. Uh, uh, a really fast motorcycle if you were alone. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think our connection to other people is what would keep us alive in an apocalypse. But it also is the the thing that would you know, the love that we have for other people, the willingness to sacrifice for them is what would be, I think, anyone's undoing ultimately. Thank you. What gives both of your characters purpose? Well, I mean, I think that that for Perry, uh, his love for Kathleen has created the only family bond that he has left. Um, and the, the willingness to sacrifice for her is what uh is giving him purpose um and for tommy uh the idea of creating this new world in jackson and starting over is giving him purpose i mean think and i think that in terms of like just as human beings we're all looking for purpose and wandering until we find it and i think that the, that both the characters that i got to play are living the purpose that they've imagined for themselves. You're a veteran of both TV shows and games. Do you have a preference? Oh, man. Well, when you get to tell it on the scale of the HBO stage, uh, there's nothing that could possibly be better than that. Um, on the other hand, in video games, we work an eight-hour day. And... <laughs> <laughs> and the focus is directly on the quality of the work. We're never worried about lighting. We're never worried about, you know, cameras coming around. You're never worried about your close-up. But it's all a very intense uh, uh, acting experience every day, which is ultimately why, you know, I started off on this journey. So in many ways, doing The Last of Us and then doing the game, other games that I've done, Help me fall back in love with the craft of acting because it, it demands more of you than just a, you know, a, a standard episode of television. Um, you know, my heroes growing up were, you know, the, the classics, De Niro and Daniel Day-Lewis and Marlon Brando and Montgomery Clift and being able to sort of like aspire to that level of work is, is what I've always aspired to. To be able to do that level of work on the HBO stage was, uh, uh, you know, it's I should retire now. In the official podcast of the game, Neil Druckmann said that the characters found on the journey were like a mirror of the relationship of Joel and Ellie. And I want to know if Kathleen and Perry are a mirror of this relationship too, like 
protector and protege, maybe? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a little bit different in that uh, uh, the, I don't, I mean, look, I, I, I know that Perry is absolutely in love with Kathy. Um, and we never talked about whether or not that relationship had any sort of consummation. But in terms of what his feelings are for her, they're as deep as you can go for another person. Um, and so in one aspect, she is in charge. And so there are aspects of, of, of Bill to her in that sort of world and sort of her sort of dominance of things. But in terms of capability and capacity for violence, uh, Perry has a lot more of that inside of him and a lot more experience of that than she does. So he is physically, uh, I think in many ways, her her protector and sort of the bill in, in that. But I think that the parallels of relationships, the idea that these things that we do for love are not necessarily positives, that the worst things that we can do as human beings are often done for love as well, is, is very much alive in Perry and Kathleen's story. How was shooting the big night scene outside the house? It was everything that you dream about as a small child. <laughs> There were, oh, I think 80 stuntmen and women uh, all in full gear. And they had been, they'd spent, uh, I think a month doing physical training for that and choreographing that. And we took, we were shooting nights there for four weeks on that stage, uh, uh, getting all the details that sort of like end up in the, in the uh, ultimately in that massive bit. Um, And it was just, it, it was, you know, 100 people coming together to play for four weeks straight and committing as much as you possibly can to the experience and then doing it again. So it was, uh, it was, it was fantastic. I mean, it was cold and it was dark <laughs> and we got snowed out a couple of times, but yeah, it was, uh, it was a perfect experience for me. So Perry is an original character for the series, but is there any inspiration that you drew from in order to understand and portray your character? I, I mean, the, the sort of description of him was fairly simple. There was a, a line about him maybe being ex-military um, and the idea that at a certain point within the final uh, uh, climax, climactic battle, that he's operating like a professional, that he goes into sort of like, professional mode while everything else is falling to shit. And so I just latched onto those things, the idea that he had been a professional beforehand and really sort of committing to learning all the things that I would want him to know and, and bringing that so that it felt natural um, was, uh, was, you know, everything laid the groundwork for everything that I ended up doing with the character. Did you have any memorable moments with Melanie? I mean, you both are so incredible actors. Every moment with her was amazing because just sort of there's a life and 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 uh, uh, uniqueness to every take that she does. So being able just to sort of ride that wave was was amazing. Um, but my favorite thing was you know sitting in the warming tents and just chatting about life and our kids and 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 getting to know her as a person she just is such uh, an extraordinary person it was it was uh, that was i think in many ways of the experience uh, uh, was as special as anything going fab oh thank you so much everyone for your questions and jeffrey thank you so much for your answers and for your time mm -hmm.